Welcome back, TCS TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here from the camera store. We've got Jordan Drake from the camera store. Excited today. to be back in front of the camera. Exactly. Chris. And if you're in front of the camera, who's operating the camera? We're taking some risks today. <laughs> um, your 10 year old son, Kai, is going to be operating. We're going to see how it goes. Yep. Uh, you know, we're out here in front of the camera because there aren't uh, a ton of exciting cameras at this very moment. Well, just not much new yeah, stuff coming exactly. out because I'm sure a huge part of it's the earthquake. Also, everybody's waiting to throw all their stuff out at Photokina. So exactly. we're in a bit of a dry spell right now. Exactly. So we're like, what are we going to talk about for camera storage? Well, and we have an opportunity because although we don't like to do unboxings and all that kind uh, of stuff. Anything you know, but those. What we, what we have been getting asked a lot is what do you guys shoot with at home? Yep. And, uh, you know, how does CCS TV work? What do you guys do behind the scenes? So yep. we're going to actually tell you guys what's in our camera bags today, what gear we use day in, day out uh, for our own stuff. And, and I'm going to talk about some of the kit I find essential for shooting camera store TV as well. Absolutely. So join us for a what's in our bag episode. I hope we're in focus. So let's start with DSLRs. Okay. Now, according to every message board, YouTube comment, you are a huge Nikon fanboy, sell out for Nikon. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Nikon sell it, I believe, has been thrown Because around. I happen to shoot one, so I yeah. guess by default that makes me a Nikon lover and uh, a Canon hater. Of by course, default, yeah. Even though Despite I gave like the 80D and X review. Five DSLR. DSLR yeah. and, stuff. and to me, a camera's a camera. I know it's ridiculous. But I do like Nikon. I do think they make excellent cameras, and I do love the D750. As an I, SLR, I think it's near perfect. It's one of the most well-rounded full frame yeah. if not the most well-rounded full frame Fantastic. DSLR ever made yeah. yeah now I'm using the 24 to 120 f4 mm. kit lens on here uh, controversial well first off I'm a cheap bastard and right you get a really good you price get a really good it. kit price yeah but frankly also you know I'm not huge on the 2.8 lenses anymore I mean right. it, we reviewed the Nikkor 24 to 72 I was not super impressed yeah. with it, the new version I yeah. love the range of this the f4 is fantastic slower glass does tend to be optically better I mean people got to keep that in mind more money does not mean better optics mm. and and uh, yeah, I love the range on it. Right. Yeah. In terms of other glass, because I mean, that's a good all rounder. Right? So now that I've cropped on 2.8 glass, I do have a 70 to 200 2.8. But look, it's the classic, it's yeah. the first version. Right. So uh, you can say that you like the vintage aesthetic. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, I mean, the 7200 2.8 is a workhorse. I'd be perfectly happy with the F4 version. Right. But frankly, you know, I'm not buying a lot of extra glass for the Nikon. I've got the 85 1.8 in my nice. bag too. Yeah. I love it. Again, cheap. Yeah. And good, great lens optically. But I'm not buying a lot of Nikon lenses anymore because I don't really use the SLR. My fiance does, she loves it, that's what she uses. Right. She's used to an SLR. Yeah, I mean, my wife's the exact same way. Whenever we're doing a job or something, she wants the SLR. Right. But for your own stuff, you're pretty much mirrorless now, right? Yeah, I know. Despite these giant guns right here, yeah. I've gone mirrorless. <laughs> that's up to you, internet. you make the call on that. I've gone mirrorless because I don't want to carry this heavy stuff. And I don't need what an SLR does for my photography. So as the host of Canada's most popular YouTube photography show, you right. would definitely have like some Sony A7Rs kicking around, right. like some Leica M bodies. Leica stuff like M9, that of course, because that's amazing. And M9's incredible. ancient. I don't know where you pull that from. <laughs> I want a 262. Like 10 years old at I don't want a 262. But uh, yeah, you know, and of course, we make billions of dollars off our YouTube channel. Uh, secrets out. So we can afford all of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, sadly not. I know you're trying to mock me. Although I should say, though, one of the great things about being on our show is we get to use some very amazing, we some use every system. Yeah, yeah, cameras. And we get to play with it all the time. And that keeps us around to buy gear. But no, for me, I ditch the heavy SLR bag, like many of our viewers and customers out there, for something much smaller. Right. And I actually use the Panasonic GM5. That's adorable. It is, isn't it? And I use it because it makes my hands look so big when I hold it. Look <laughs> at that. Hey, isn't that incredible? Mm. No, I use it because, you know, mirrorless gives us this advantage of being able to take a camera with us anywhere right. and always shoot. And for me, if I'm shooting for the show, that's great. Otherwise, if I'm on my own, if I'm going to take pictures, it has to be convenient. I right. mean, I just I have to accept that part of myself. Well, I'm and that, lazy. And that's the difference. Like in a lot of ways, I love some of the other features that mirrorless have given us, like the electronic viewfinder and stuff. Yep. You're still there with the original intent, which is the smaller, lighter body. Having I still it think everywhere. The yeah. Micro Four Thirds is still probably the best example of that. Yeah, you know, it's sad that not enough more people use this camera because for me, the whole. Oh, we even I it. know, geez. For me, the whole point of having the smaller body is the tiny sensor means tiny cameras, tiny lens yeah. mounts, right? I love this 1232 awesome kit lens. I get a viewfinder, I get manual control. What else do I really need? Yeah, that's true. Here's the best part. That's the best part. Yeah. Look tiny, at this. tiny bag. Tiny camera bag. So I got a camera in there with one lens on it, 14 mil. Yeah. 30 mil macro. 
Look Beautiful. At that. That's a great little lens. And 42.5, 1.7. So all of this stuff, look at that. That all fits into a camera bag this size. I mean, that's the beauty of yeah, this system. Yeah, and you can do most types of photography with that. I've got ND no filters. Problem. I can do landscapes. I can do portraits, anything I want. And right. it's all there nice and compact. So yeah, convenience is a big part of it. Now, of course, I'm not the only one that's shooting mirrorless now, am I, Jordan? No, I mean... I did have a Canon system for Which quite some time. Which means you hate Nikon. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still have an EOS 3 with a 24 mil when I want to go shoot some film. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I have gone completely mirrorless, initially with the A6000. I remember that, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, you love mirrorless cameras. And it was a great family camera, right? Exactly. That was my family stills camera. When the 6300 came out, though, I had to upgrade. And usually I'm not the kind of guy who upgrades every generation. Um, yeah. Now this is a better camera for shooting stills. I do like the improved viewfinder. The autofocus tracking is amazing. Like eye detect for of family course, work fantastic. is amazing. But of course, a big part of it too is going to be the video capabilities. It, yeah, right? and that's a big thing for me. Is the 6000 was a stills camera for me. The video I didn't find super usable. Where this has become our B camera for On a lot of shoots. Exactly for camera store TV stuff. What I've been doing lately is I also grabbed one of these Beholder DS1 gimbals. Uh, drop this guy on there, and what we'll do is go shoot an episode. At the tail end of it, we'll go yeah, do grab some a bunch board. of yeah. We'll Walk just get talks, some nice tracking yeah. shots, stuff like that. It's small and it's portable. We used uh, to have to take the Ronin M out. I mean, that was such a pain. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah so for this kind of covers both niches for me. The problem is, and it's well documented, Sony's standard zooms all suck basically. Right. My 18105s are, but generally, for the dollar, <laughs> not great stuff. Right. So what I'm using is uh, a few primes. Uh, the Sigma 19 millimeter, I love oh, to death. Now it's not boy. the fastest. Sigma fanboy. Yeah, total Sigma fanboy. <laughs> um, it's a very sharp lens. It's very reasonable. And I'm not a huge fan of the Sony 16s and 20 mils. Um, so right. this kind of sits right in the middle there. Mm -hmm. Great Very sharp. Not the fastest focuser, but usually I don't need that on an ultra wide angle. Mm -hmm. um, the 35 and 50 Sonys are totally underrated. I love the 50. For it was the funny money, when yeah. we when we were out with a bunch of press at the 6300 launch. I had the 35 mil on it, and everyone was like, "What lens is that? No, <laughs> no one even knows that those two exist." And they're awesome. Like they're stabilized, sharp primes, mm -hmm. which is great with this body not having a stabilizer. The only real drawback to this guy that does really bug me is all my home videos are in 24 frames per second because the 30 frame per second 4K recording isn't great. Um, right. So that is the one drawback. If but you're, you're a pretentious lot of 30, artist. Exactly. It's, it's all art. I'm Where just like, why do Jordan's yeah. videos all look so vintage? Yeah, and a little exactly. Bit blurry. I mean, I I'm, I'm a cinematographer now. <laughs> so. Award winning. Yeah. Hi, Maddie. <laughs> All right, so Maddie, my new baby, is probably going to join in the conversation yeah, it's, it's here. Exactly. She, this, she's so been like, interjecting yeah. every once in a while. So we've talked about what we like to shoot personally on our free time. And of course, on the Camera Store TV, I get to use a brand new camera every week. Right. Generally, I mean, that always changes. But our kit for shooting the show, yes. how has that evolved? I mean, at the core, we've got the Sony FS5. The FS5 has kind of become our bread and butter because it can do everything. You know, if we're reviewing a 4K stills camera, I've got the option to shoot 4K, exactly. but I can move very quickly with it. And that's yep. the most important thing for me because it's, um, it's all very time sensitive. And that review is coming? It, it, it's it, coming, I, I know. Okay, so we have the, <laughs> the raw upgrade is on the way to us right now. Once we get that, I'll do a little bit of testing and we yep. will get our FS5 it's Sony's review. Fault. It's Sony's fault. Yeah. Yes, they just keep adding. <laughs> awesome new things to it so we can't finish this review. Now, I've been using the FS5 for a year, but it has changed because we are absolutely Sigma fanboys. Totally. Aren't we? Absolute and Sigma And who junkies. isn't a Sigma fanboy? Really, I don't know. Right Whoever now. they are, I wouldn't get along with them. No, in a they, social they'd situation. Probably be terrible people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we got the MC11 adapter. We used to use Metabones with Canon lenses and Tamron yeah. all the time. And we were constantly changing yeah. our lenses based on the type of shoot we were doing, stuff like that. But now with the Sigma 1835 and now the 50 to 100, we've got right. two lenses that can basically cover anything we need to do for the regular walk and talk Absolutely. field stuff. I'm mostly on the 1835. We can do product shots with the 50 to 100. It's great for close-ups. Absolutely. Um, and the great thing about that with the MC11 adapter is I get my focus indicator mm -hmm. right on the camera like I'm using Sony glass, my zoom indicator, so it's really easy for me to do repeatable results where the Metabones doesn't carry over a lot of that information. But we did run into a pretty serious issue with the MC11 adapter. Yeah. Uh, where on the FS5 we were getting this weird flicker so pattern. So strange. And you know, it's funny because the only thing that we did that was different was we changed the MC11. Yeah. And so I'm looking at these settings, wondering what's going on. I thought it might be something with the electronic ND filter. But then this angel on Twitter who I don't remember, I can't find your we're tweet. Terrible. I can't find, I don't know your handle. Thank you. Whoever you are said just turn off the lens optimizations. We did that. 
we've had no issues ever since. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Maddie. But of course, video is only a certain part of it. I mean, audio is also a big thing, as you can hear right now, yes, right? But this is terrible. <laughs> So, you know, way back in the day, we experimented with boom mics and Sennheisers and stuff like that. But now we use Sony microphones, yeah. lav mics, they work the best for us, well, and Rode. Yeah, so we have two different mic setups for different situations. Right now, we're in the middle of nowhere, we're at your place. Um, I'm not worried it's about not interference. The of nowhere. Okay, there's not a lot of radio <laughs> interference where we're filming. You're right. Now. So um, we've got two mics. I typically use the Sony D11. Um, yeah. Uh, I love their auto scanning abilities. And you've I have the old UWP 130s. 130s. Right now. Exactly. Um, Gaffer tape on them and everything. And we want to use the same capsules so that our mics sound different. We don't want them to sound different when you hear my voice in your mic. I hear your voice in my mic. Sure. Um, but we do run into issues when we're shooting by like a mall, a school, out on the street a lot yeah. of the time, uh, especially when we're traveling and shooting in like New York or something like that. That's where we go to the roads because I don't have to worry about radio yeah. interference. The now, Rode Filmmaker Lav Kit, definitely nice. I mean, one of the things we really liked about the Sonys and the Rodes in general was a just warm, rich sound. I like my voice with Rodes and Sonys. They sound similar. Yeah. And, you know, back in the day with the Sennheisers, you had to always sync up frequencies, change them all yeah. the time. It was a pain. The Sonys auto sync, but it still has to be done as a rule. These Rode Filmmaker Labs use Wi-Fi. Yeah. Couldn't be simpler. Yeah, when you're traveling, they're amazing. Now, we do have an issue with these guys. They're mm -hmm. a great setup but you don't like wearing them. I complain a lot. Yeah. Because look how big it is. It's so bulky in there. You put it in your pocket. It's lightweight, but it's bulky. Yeah, no, and that is definitely a concern. We don't have to worry about that. Why not use the smaller kit? So that's why the mm -hmm. Sonys have been our go-to. Okay, so that rounds out a lot of the gear that we use, but there are some very simple pieces of equipment that actually make our lives a lot easier as totally. we shoot day to day. Yeah, I mean, the biggest one that I always recommend to people yeah. is the video monopod. I mean, this is an old 561B. That's how long we've been using these things. <laughs> Uh, they're amazing. Yeah. When you when we're using them in an episode, a lot of people think that most of the stuff is on a tripod. It's yeah. almost exclusively shot on this, and the movement is so minor, you don't you really don't notice, notice it, it when you're We're watching. locked off right now on a tripod, and really frankly, we're on the monopod, especially with modern day stabilizers. Yeah. You don't notice anything. It works great, and it lets us move quickly from place to place, yeah. keeps things light and portable. Absolutely, and the other great thing with this, if you've got a monopod, find the center of gravity, pinch it there, and go for a walk, you've got a poor man's steady cam. Exactly. Yeah, it's a really handy technique. Now, back in the day, we would always do white balancing off of t-shirts, pieces of paper, concrete, whatever we could find. Generally, I'd look up and say, <laughs> eh, 7,800 Kelvin. Yeah, and that's a terrible way to do it, because it means a lot of work in post trying to fix it, if you yeah. even can. Yeah. So the thing we've been using lately is this new X-Rite Color Checker yeah. Video Edition. Uh, now I'm holding it right now, so all of you at home can grade this same <laughs> clip, see if you do a better job than we yep. did here. All the colors, back focusing chart, gray card, everything is built into this thing. It's light, it's easy to carry, and uh, you know, remember, if you're shooting something like log profiles on cameras, everything's so flat and gray anyways, you can't always judge it by eye, this is no, a way better way It's to do really it. tough when everything's gray to be like, I remember what color that is. With the color checker, you can make sure you get natural, nice yeah. colors. And it has saved me a ton of time in post, as much as you hate. <laughs> Picking it up and holding it in front of the camera. All right, well, TCS TV viewers, that is what is in our bag. Uh, hopefully you found that useful yeah, you, or you fascinating. Can, I don't know. You can all stop asking us that now. This is amazing. It's going to free up so much Twitter and Facebook time. Exactly. So uh, keep in mind, hopefully some good tips. You guys can shoot the way we shoot. Audio is super important. Get those video accessories. And uh, yeah, I think mirrorless is a great way to go now. I think a lot of people are pushing that way because of the portability. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions about anything here, of course, let us know down there in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Check out our Twitter feeds. Check out our Instagram. Subscribe to our channel. And uh, yeah, don't worry. You can keep asking us questions like, what do we use and what are we playing with? That's always good to know. Are we ever going to buy new gear again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess we will. Yeah, never stops. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much for joining us. See you again.